What is good everyone? Welcome to another video. It has been another wild week. A lot of things are happening and they're happening really fast. This week, we've got this insane text to video announcement by Nvidia that might have some folks over in Hollywood a little bit worried. We've also got a 3D digital reconstruction project that uses only images to create this really cool video. And as per usual, we got billionaires threatening to sue trillion dollar conglomerates via a tweet. We're gonna take a look at these stories and a lot more on this week's edition of What's Good in AI. Let's kick it off by taking a look at Mini GPT-4, a new open source project that's multimodal, meaning it accepts inputs of different formats. Now we've been waiting to get access to this from OpenAI's GPT-4, but we've got it now in an open source project. Mini GPT-4 exhibits many of the capabilities similar to those exhibited by GPT-4. It can do things like write stories and poems just inspired from an image. It can also provide solutions to images and even teach users, as you'll see in this demo, how to cook based on a photo. It can look at a description of a website written in text and create the HTML template for it. And also, it can take a look at a meme and explain it. Mini GPT-4 uses the Vicuna open source language model, and I really encourage you all to go try it out on the project page. Just upload a picture and start chatting with it. Next up, NVIDIA and their researchers at their Toronto AI lab have come out with this new stable diffusion based model for high quality video syntheses, where you can go from text to video at a pretty impressive resolution. At the moment, you're getting about 113 frames at 24 frames per second, which leads to about a five second clip. Now, of course, they're not perfect. There's still a long way to go, but it almost feels like we're getting to the point where just an average person could create an entire movie just out of a book right from their computer. NVIDIA mentions that they've turned pre-trained image diffusion models into temporarily consistent video generators. They applied these methods to two kind of applications, in the wild driving scene video creation and creative content creation where you go from text to video with a prompt. Also the driving case, some of them even five minutes long. With videos that long, you can maybe start thinking about how applications will include creating training data for self-driving cars. We of course can't talk about text to video without mentioning Runway ML's Gen 2. I mean, look at the quality of this generation. It kind of makes you wonder at this point, what are they thinking over at the Pixar animation department and places like that, right? I mean, take a look at this video created by Twitter user Timmy. You can see the level of detail. It's really beautiful and really crisp. And it kind of, even here, just looks like the intro to a movie. Could be like an intro to a children's cartoon. Breaking news. OpenAI has dropped the biggest release of the year. You can now rename your API keys. No, but seriously, actually, this is pretty useful to developers who are constantly trying to keep track of all of their secret keys. You can have up to 25 keys and you can rename them and keep them organized and do all kinds of fun stuff. For our next story, Stability released an open source language model called Stable LM. They've released alpha versions of the model in 3 billion and 7 billion parameter versions and are going to drop 15 to 65 billion parameter models soon. We of course know stability from the very popular Stable Diffusion, a really sick image model that they released in 2022. Now, while some are happy that a company has released an open source model, you can see by the response in the comments on Hacker News, which we all know is a very loving and positive place. A lot are complaining that it was released with no benchmarks or details, and people are confused about how to pronounce its name. People were also kind of surprised by this, since the CEO of Stability has previously said that they don't want to train any large language models, as their focus is on swarm and not general intelligence. Either way, new language model, they've put it out there for people to play with, gets a thumbs up in my book. Go ahead and give it a try, let me know what y'all think, I'll put the link in the description, play around with it. They got their 7 billion parameter model over on Hugging Face. And another story related to Stable Diffusion, Google will no longer allow remote UIs on Colab according to its terms of service. This is bad news for all those image prompters who rely on Colab's GPUs for their beautiful creations. And I know that specifically it's going to affect everybody who uses that automatic project that gives you that browser interface that's based on Gradio where you can tunnel into Colab. The Colab team has said that they're trying to be cool, but usage on GPUs has really increased lately and it's costing them a lot of money. It's understandable and they've also said that Pro 
and other paying users will not be affected by this and can continue to use Colab as usual for stable diffusion. So it looks like you can move on over to your local or upgrade on Colab, or if anybody else has another solution, please put it in the comments. Our next story is about these things called nerfs or neural radiance fields. And you've probably seen these videos all over social media where it looks like a drone's flying around capturing 360 degree footage. This stuff's trending again because of this new paper called Zip Nerf that is about basically explaining how they've made advancements in finding ways to synthesize sort of original views of a scene given a set of input images or videos. And again, it's building on this idea that you can make 3D pictures by using a bunch of other pictures from a bunch of different angles and you can sort of compile them and create this crazy cool 3D model that kind of looks like you're looking at it in real life. At the moment, the most prominent name I've seen in this space is Luma Labs. Go check it out at lumalabs.ai and you can see these really cool reconstructions people are creating. Now I want to take a second and mention this story. Okay, we're recording. Brother Gepetto, can you tell our viewers on TikTok what all this is about? Of course, my child. I am an artificial intelligence manifesting as an old Christian monk, and I'm here talking to this wonderful person by this beautiful pond at sunset. We are using new technologies to enable our conversation, allowing me to understand what the player is saying and to give a voice to my thoughts. It uses ChatGPT, Whisper, both by OpenAI, Eleven Labs, and VR to like basically make this NPC that you can like talk to, it can respond to you, it can even remember things you've said. Brother Gepetto, can you tell us what special animation abilities you have? I can control where I look. I can look at the lovely pond. Or I can look at the setting sun. Or I can look back at you. Is there anything specific you would like me to do? We are living in hard times. A lot of things are happening, both good and bad, and many people are anxious. Do you have any words of wisdom for us that can guide us and be more calm? As the sun sets on this day, my child, let us reflect on the blessings we have received, the strength that comes from facing challenges, and the love that surrounds us even in uncertain times. It's almost like you're talking to a real person, except they're a little bit slow because of the voice functionality. But it'll get there. Remember to trust in the Lord, for He is the rock that we can rely on and to treat others with kindness, compassion, and understanding. No matter what happens, let us remain steadfast in our faith, hope, and love, and know that in the end, all will be well. I'm not sure if this is exactly the project that was used for this video that we're seeing now, but I found this one project called Conv AI, which is a plugin for Unity that allows you to basically create these experiences and have conversations with NPCs. If you're a game developer, this is really sick. If anybody uses Unity or Unreal and gives this a try, please let us know how it goes in the comments. Greg Brockman, co-founder of OpenAI, did a TED Talk this week where he demoed ChatGPT plugins. He showed how you could create a recipe for dinner, generate an image of the finished dish, draft a tweet about it, and build the grocery list in Instacart, all without ever having to leave the chatbot. Now we saw a similar demo on the plugins announcement, but it's still very cool to see again, and it's exciting to see what's coming. Something notable from the talk, at least for me, was that it was sort of confirmed that OpenAI really thinks AGI is coming and that they're really working on it. Now, are they right? Or how long is it gonna take? I don't know if anybody can answer that right now. Next up, I'm gonna bring attention to this tweet by one of the creators of the Langchain framework. In the tweet, an article by Langchain is linked where the author does a semi-deep dive on autonomous agents projects like Baby AGI and AutoGPT, as well as agent simulation projects like Camel and generative agents. And most importantly, for all the developers out there, Langchain implementations of all of these projects. I'm gonna throw this one story in last minute because it kind of makes me feel like we're living in the future. This company called Humane has created an AI powered wearable. And in this demo, the things that are shown don't seem that impressive, but this is the one use case that I think is really cool. Basically now speak in a foreign language, but using your own voice. That's pretty cool. And I know it may seem kind of basic and you can sort of Frankenstein that together with today's tools, but there's so many practical applications. And 
For our final story, we got Elon is threatening to sue Microsoft. He responded to a tweet saying Microsoft has dropped Twitter from its advertising platform as they refuse to pay Twitter's API fees by saying that Microsoft has illegally trained their OpenAI models using Twitter data. And when he announces legal action, it kind of sounds like the same way as when Spider-Man announces that the pizza has arrived. Does Elon have a case? I have no idea. As far as I know, OpenAI hasn't really disclosed where they got all their training data from. Does anybody know? Leave a comment, let me know what you think. All right, everyone, were there any stories that I didn't cover that you thought were cool? Please let us all know in the comments. Also, please hit that subscribe button, that really helps out the channel. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.